Minister of Health, Dr. Sagi Hanire, revealed that a new case of the coronavirus has been identified in the country. Dr. Hanire, while speaking with newsmen at the University of Benin Teaching Hospital in Benin City, Edo State, also, the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Adeleke Mamura, while in Lagos at the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research Conference, also confirmed the second case. Our correspondent, Mary Chinda, tells us more. It was a gloomy Friday, February 28th, when Nigeria announced its very first case of the Chinese coronavirus disease, COVID-19, via an Italian expatriate. An outbreak, the federal government has been battling to curtail its spread. The Lagos State government quickly swung into action with the quarantine of the Italian expatriate at the infectious disease hospital, Yaba. We had gone out. Our people are out there now trying to track every of um, uh, suspected interaction um, that this patient might have had contact with and we're ready, our facility has been fortified to um, continue, if need be, of any form of test and um, containment, if, if need be. The important thing to know now is that the patient is confined. We have aggressively started to identify all his contacts all the way to the airline, and that process started around 3 a.m. Uh, this morning. Days later, another contact of the index case is confirmed to have the coronavirus disease. The Minister of State for Health visits Lagos for the first time since the outbreak in an attempt to give update, douse the tension and reassure Nigerians. We understand that the case uh, is one of the uh, contacts already um, established from the index case, that is the Italian that came into the country. Um, well, we understand that that, that uh, new case is not as at now manifesting any symptoms. But uh, there was just a suspicion that, okay, let's uh, screen uh, by uh, doing the test. And uh, it tested positive. It, that's in Ogun State. With the outbreak and global spread of COVID-19 sending scores of persons across the world to their early graves and nations like Italy putting over 16 million persons on quarantine and the U.S. having over 437 cases and two confirmed cases in Nigeria, what are the smart ways of keeping far off the virus? You must make that conscious effort not to touch the face so that you don't increase the chances or the risk of uh, uh, catching this uh, disease. So if you're coughing, make sure you uh, cover up so that you don't uh, spread droplets coming out of that. Everybody should know that you wash your hands. Once you go out, you wash your hands. If you're coming, you wash your hands. If you go to the toilet, you wash it. Before you eat, you wash it. If you cough, you wash your hands. And with the WHO declaring COVID-19 a public health emergency, should Nigerians panic? There's no cause for alarm. You see, one, one thing that uh, at every point we try to emphasize is um, to, the need to avoid panic, the need to avoid hysteria. We should spread facts and not fears. Please, Lagosians should not panic. Everything is in control. Lagos has the highest number of Chinese all over the country. There is a hub of Chinese in Lagos states. Um, and we know that um, we can restrict, there is freedom of movement. We can restrict their movements to and fro into Nigeria. What we rather need to do as a health system is to beef up our own health facilities and capacity to be able to detect both at the borders those who are coming in and those who are going out of Nigeria. This is not the best time to go for a business trip in China, in Italy, in Korea, or any of the high body countries. It's not the best of times. And if by any chance you've traveled and you're back, 
from many of those areas do self-isolation. With almost 110,000 cases of the coronavirus confirmed across the world, what medical experts at the Nigerian Medical Research Center are saying is to immediately stop the spread of fake news across social media and pick up regular respiratory and hand washing practices. From Lagos, Nigeria, Mary Chinda reporting. For Joining us in the studio is Dr. John Boala. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Thank you for having me. Uh, many have made a joke of the fact that um, the fake news would kill us more before the coronavirus itself. What are some of these uh, information that you've had to deal with? Well, uh, that's true. Misinformation is not good, and uh, we should only rely on the fact. And the CDC, Nigeria CDC, and also the Federal Minister of Health, they are out there and uh, enlightening us all the time. So these are the information that we should rely on. Uh, yes, we've had uh, uh, cases where we had people circulating information that uh, this uh, virus was created or released by people. Um, that's also not true. Viruses in general, uh, there are microorganisms that can uh, mutate. They might also exist in um, uh, reservoirs or an certain animals that uh, with time, and they can change in the, their characteristics and also when they get access to human beings uh, cause uh, illnesses. So people also circulating that uh, they can make use of uh, chloroquine to treat. And uh, there was even that, was, a, that one was very famous. Yes, there was even a voice uh, record that was going out about in the, via WhatsApp that uh, people should take the chloroquine uh, one in one in the morning, one in the evening, and uh, that's not true. Yes, chloroquine itself has some antiviral properties, but it has to be used by specialists. It was a trial they tried in China. You know, when they had a large group of people, they were using anything that is available. They have done their mixtures of their traditional medicine and also use antiviral drugs. So the combination of those medication is not just one. And their close supervision, they have made use of it and got some result, but not for people to go about and take and it. Remember, chloroquine has a lot of side effects as well. So taking it and indefinitely for a certain period, even when it was used for chloroquine, it has a specific number of days. And specific what are some of the side effects that taking chloroquine It can be a, a cardiac, uh, it can be sight, vision, apart from the itch that people know, but that, that's even negligible, but it can affect the eyes as, as well as sight. Um, so, and generally most drugs are get metabolized in the major organs, uh, so you can also impact on uh, certain organs in your system. Uh, people also mention of garlic. Uh, well, yes, garlic is uh, healthy food, and it's okay if you're good. To, uh, people have it for their uh, to control or stabilize certain cardiovascular issues. They have it in form of tablets or uh, directly as uh, uh, the vegetable that they use in the cooking food. And if you don't bother about the um, uh, the, the nature of mm. garlic in terms of the odor, that's fine, you can have that. It's been uh, known over years that yes, it tends to help with a common cold and stuff like that. So if you're able to control, prevent some common cold, it can help you in not having suspicion that you have coronavirus, but that's also not a treatment, but it's good to build our immunity in any way. Yes, but that it's not a treatment for coronavirus. It's not a treatment. As of now, do we have a treatment? Uh, There's no specific aware. treatment anywhere. Is, uh, they, they are supportive treatments, with symptomatic and supportive. Uh, symptomatic in the sense that if a person has uh, temperature or runny nose or cough, you can give something to, to help alleviate that. And then if the person has gone into complications like shortness of breath or uh, difficulty in general, the person cannot even um, take in air and expel by himself or herself, then you have to give further support if either a life-saving machine or intubate the person, and, and, and that's done usually in uh, 
uh, ICU. Okay, I, I want to ask this uh, other myth that's been going around, or should I say contradictory explanations not meet this time around. Um, the use of face mask and hand sanitizer. I've actually had a, a doctor here that said um, we're overflogging the issue of face mask. Uh, could you explain to us? It, she, she even said that face masks will not mask will not really help you much in um, fighting against uh, coronavirus. Could you explain a little bit more? Yeah, you know, uh, it was it's an emerging uh, disease. So uh, anything that was new in the beginning, yes, people were using face masks, especially in China all over the place. But with time, especially now that the mass is scarce, we need to prioritize. And there are a lot of observation and studies. And it's been observed that, look, the best persons that should use the mask are people that have symptoms. Somebody that is sneezing or coughing repeatedly, they should wear the mask, which is really true. It's more important. If I'm coughing now, I should be doing the mask with masks, at least if we have only one. But if we have two and I'm close to you, why not? Two of you can wear it. The other issue that you have with the mask is, not just wearing it. People might not be able to have it to change it when it's necessary. So it might end up trapping other germs in it if you use it for weeks. How, how long is, is it ideal? If it's available, you? it's better to change it twice a day. Especially really? if the person is ill uh, and is sneezing and coughing because it gets wet. Okay. But now, um, some countries are already rationing the mask and saying, look, you can use it twice, two, two masks a week if it's just for prevention. Because if I just want to wear it and enter the public transport and go home, because I might sit with someone that I don't know when they will cough. Okay. So why not? If I have one, I can sit in the public transport and put it on, but not in Nigeria at this stage. I'm just giving a general global okay. perspective. Okay. Let's say you are in a certain country that they have large number, maybe 1,000 or like 5,000. Italy, for instance. Italy. Italy also is locked down, but they still move around. So if I need to go out, and I don't know who will sit in less than two meters with me. I might probably put on the mask, and then in case the person just coughs spontaneously, and if I have one, I can say, oh, please have one have a mask and put on. But you need to know how to take it out um, carefully and know what to do with it if you feel it's been contaminated. You need to dispose it out um, correctly. Um, so when they're saying the use of mask is not, yes, it does not prevent you completely 100% from getting it because you have other ways. You can get your hands contaminated either on the surfaces or handshake. So you need to make sure that. Now, I, I, that. even on television, I see people shaking with their elbows, uh, elbows. without their hands. Yes. Yeah. So you, you, it's good to sneeze in through the elbow. But now we have to also add that people with short sleeves, they have to do that on their shoulder. And if you're sneezing, you need to cover the nose as well, okay. not just the mouth. Okay. So it's, 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 it's a, a mask is still a good to have because if someone is sneezing or coughing, you need that. And people in the hospital, it's priority is for somebody that is sick and people working in hospital. What about this hand sanitizer craziness? The, 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 the day I just went to, into a shop, a sanitizer that would go for 1,500, I was told it was going for 3,000 naira. You know, what, what, what about sanitizer? Must everybody have a sanitizer, especially now that it is scarce? Um, not necessary because it will reach a point that even if you have it now, um, at a point you will not get. So it's good to have the knowledge. The best practice is hand wash with soap and water and you're likely to have that readily available most times, anywhere you go to. So the, 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 the advantage of the uh, sanitizer is in case you are in a position that you might not quickly get uh, soap water. and water. So you sanitize the hand. Or if you're putting in certain PPEs, gloves and stuff like that in a hospital setting, it's good to sanitize it before you take it off. Because in the process of taking it off, people do make mistakes. You might take it off and mistakenly contaminate your hand, which you know you're supposed to wash. But you know things can happen. You can get to the tap, the tap is not running. And in the course of finding another one, the reflex, we know that we're not supposed to touch our, touch our faces or something, but reflex, somebody might touch the eyes or nose or something. So it's good to sanitize first if you're in a hospital setting. Now it's a good to have, um, but it's not necessary that you must have it to be able to protect yourself. You can protect yourself from hand wash with soap and water. And sooner or later, um, if, uh, especially let's say countries that uh, was hit, they, they cannot 
uh, sustained use of sanitizers. Okay, because now that it is getting um, scarce here in Nigeria, and we've, I mean, hopefully we wouldn't have a need for uh, too much of it, um, hopefully, uh, but if that situation does come, do you see us as prepared and have adequate supply for the people in whatever vicinity uh, the epidemic might take place? You mean supply of what, mask or? Mask and hand sanitizers. No, like I said, if it becomes um, serious and we have large number of people affecting, you cannot have sanitizers. There so there's no need for you, you can imagine this is that big cities have sanitizers in the shops. If you go to some villages or local government, you don't see any sanitizer anywhere. So the talk of sanitizer is going to be out completely. It's going to be hand wash, avoid uh, close contact and uh, social distancing. This is what they have to practice. Now, in terms of masks, like we said, if it's bad, there will be a lockdown. So you're not going to move. If there is need for someone, let's say we are at a moderate stage now, say the, the, the risk stage is not that high, that people are still moving, it's good for someone that is, in fact, it's recommended. Once you are coughing or sneezing, please put on your mask. And if you are someone that you're going to have to sit with somebody close, maybe you're flying, and the person is sneezing or coughing repeatedly near you, you also will have to wear the mask. In that case, it can help you. Okay, Let, let's talk about the latest case. We now have two confirmed cases of coronavirus in Nigeria. And there are still, I think, about um, five persons or three persons that are yet to be identified. Could you bring us up to speed on the latest information? What do we know about the second case? Well, this second case is someone that was a close contact to the index case that we had in Nigeria, uh, that was first diagnosed in Nigeria. So it, it's something that is expected. The... the uh, the, the way we check is that if there's one person confirmed anywhere, it is likely that the person has had contact with minimum two to five person, minimum. So definitely you will have like two to five that will be positive from one person. And this is a quick, this is a case that was isolated quickly. Even though he's able to travel to Ogun State, it's relatively it's still a, a, a quick action. They were able to identify it and, and diagnose it quickly because the hospital, the clinic he went to at Ogun State is a good setting. Um, so they were able to quickly suspect that. And um, all the, the majority of the uh, close contact were all isolated. What is key for us is testing for these people. We don't have to wait for long when people are in isolation. This is the learning most other countries are talking about, Italy and US as well when they brought in some few people uh, from other parts of the world and some that find their way into the country, they did not take massive testing. I know it's scarce, it's expensive, but it's cheaper than allowing it to be overblown. So at this stage, it would be wise for us to, to, to start testing. And if this thing continues to escalate worldwide um, massively, um, China is uh, getting hold of it now, but if it starts escalating worldwide, I see a point where I personally is looking at options and I feel even targeting and picking people, not at driveway like they did in Korea, which is very good, but we might have to start picking at airports and port of entries and take samples and run them down over time because it's, we had similar cases a few years ago, I mean, hundreds of years back that become so massive and now people fly around and move the world, much. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay let's, let's look at that. There's one myth I forgot to um, raise, or should I say, um, yeah, it's a myth um, that the climate in Africa might not allow the virus to thrive. So uh, we shouldn't necessarily panic that it will not become an epidemic because of a hot weather. Is there any truth to that? Well, it's good to give clarification here. So many people still don't even know about this uh, virus. I took an Uber and I was talking to this person, uh, the driver that took me. Uh, the last time I was on the phone call with, uh, with you on, the, on this case, and the person doesn't even know about coronavirus. So if an Uber driver in Abuja doesn't know about coronavirus, it's, it's a big problem. Some also said, oh, yes, there's a cure already. Some said the vaccine will be out soon. No, you cannot bring out vaccine in a very short period. You can get a vaccine, but you need to, it passes through three stages of test, and that takes months. So okay, you have not to years. distract you. So you're rubbishing the comments by some professor from UMUDK that he has found a cure for yes. uh, coronavirus. Yes. Okay. Uh, some, I had it even on radio. So in, somebody was saying that, look, somebody stipulated all the stages that need to be passed through for it to confirm a cure. And the person, the, the presenter was saying, no, it's possible to test it in a laboratory. No, there's a difference between in vitro and in vivo uh, uh, testing or, or sampling. When you give in vitro, 
you, you are taking it in the laboratory, right? So you can test it and see if this drug has any effect on, on certain okay, organisms. I'm, I'm afraid we're but, out of time, but I want you to speak quickly on the issue of the weather. Is it possible that the African weather is on, I mean, is a, incompatible with the virus? Um, it's a thermolabile virus. So yes, heat, if it's on the surface, it won't survive for long. But the mistake people are making is they assume that if they have the virus in them, the heat will help it to treat. No. But on the surface, let's say it's on the, uh, a car door uh, or uh, the dashboard and stuff like that, the heat will kill the virus quicker than when it's in a colder or, or temperate zone. So that's yes, but not in terms of treatment. Thank you very much, Doctor, for your thoughts this Thank morning. You. Thank you for having me. All right, we continue with the news. This time we go to other parts of Africa where we hear bereaved families who lost 